Now this is a place of no judgments, so you can be honest here. Let's be honest with one another. Some of you clicked on this video because you thought the title was a typo. You were thinking it's Luther and the 95 Thesis. Everyone knows that. Well, if that's the reason you clicked on this video, get ready to learn something new because the 97 Thesis is more theologically radical than the more famous or infamous 95 Thesis. So let's explore Martin Luther and his absolutely unbelievable 97 Thesis. Welcome, explorers. Martin Luther, the man who launched the Protestant Reformation and in a roundabout way, the Counter-Reformation in the Catholic Church itself. To call him a significant historical figure in Europe would be an understatement. He quite literally changed the world. Well, the 97 Thesis did not strike a nerve like the later 95 Thesis, but in my opinion, the 97 Thesis is 287% more shocking than the 95 Thesis. In the 97 Thesis, Luther attacks the foundations of the Catholic Church itself. I don't know any other way to put it. He questions not only the conclusions of their theology, he questions how they reach and teach those conclusions as well. To put this into a modern context, let's talk Starbucks. Whether you are a Starbucks fan or a fan of another coffee brand, we can all agree that Starbucks is a massively established coffee brand with a massive consumer base. There's a Starbucks every block and a half. So what Starbucks is doing is reaching a massive group of people around the world. Well, the 97 Thesis would be the equivalent of one barista telling all of Starbucks your various flavored concoctions that you call coffee taste wrong. And not only does your coffee taste wrong, you do not make them properly, and how you teach your coffee makers to brew them is wrong as well. One barista saying Starbucks is wrong from the bottom to the top. That is the 97 Thesis. But before we can dive into specifics, let's define what theses are. Thesis is the plural term of thesis. A thesis is a statement to be proved or disproved. So the 97 Thesis is a collection of 97 statements to be proved or disproved. Martin Luther, being a professor in Wittenberg, wanted to gather people together to discuss the 97 individual thesis statements to see which held water and which did not. He wanted to open a dialogue. Now Luther was a prolific communicator and we know from his other writings and correspondence at the time that Luther believed the 97 Thesis were legitimate. And before we can finally dive into the 97 Thesis contents, we must know a little of what was the theology of the day in the Catholic Church. So then we can all be properly stunned by the 97 Thesis. In Luther's day, a theological system known as scholasticism was ruling the day. There is some debate over when scholasticism actually began to take root in the Catholic Church, but by the 8th century you can definitely see recognizable scholasticism. Scholasticism has some big-time theologians in their number, such as William of Ockham, Dun Scotus, and Gabriel Beale, who all followed in the giant scholastic boots of Thomas Aquinas. Scholasticism was built upon the philosophy of Aristotle. Aristotelian philosophy impacted all areas of the Catholic Church. It impacted how they studied scripture, how they taught others, and of course, their theological conclusions as well. Aristotelian philosophy was built upon the premise that humanity has free will and intellect, and that humanity can use that free will and intellect to deduce and discover truth. There are some things that impact a person's free will in Aristotelian philosophy, such as character, and there is a massive philosophical debate on Aristotle's idea of active intellect, but that's another video. What is important to know for the 97 Thesis is that the Catholic Church, using scholasticism, largely accepted Aristotle's idea that humanity can use free will and intellect to deduce and arrive at truth. And this becomes their foundation for study, teaching, and reaching theological truths. First, scholasticism was based on syllogisms and deductive reasoning. They studied scripture by using syllogistic reasoning. What is that? Great question. Syllogistic reasoning is the use of premises and logical deductions to reach conclusion. It is a very linear way of thinking. For an example of a syllogism, premise one, all birds have feathers. Premise two, a penguin is a bird. Deductive conclusion, a penguin has feathers. 
Now, syllogistic reasoning gets more complicated than that with multiple premises and rebuttal arguments, but the idea is, if you can debate and deduce true premises, then you can reach true conclusions. It is a philosophy built on humanity's innate ability to think, deduce, and use logic and their free will. Now, not only did scholasticism study scriptures using syllogisms, it's how they taught as well. Syllogisms were the basis of the Catholic university system. It was how they taught higher education, not just theology, but all subjects. Thomas Aquinas, who wrote arguably the most notable scholastic work, Summa Theologica, and the Summa Theologica is written in a syllogistic format. Aquinas asks questions, posts objections to the questions, rebuts the objections, and offers concluding premises. There's a link in the description to the Summa Theologica if you want to see syllogisms at work in Catholic theology. Well, the use of Aristotelian logic, which relied on humanity's free will and intellect, and the use of linear syllogisms is central to scholastic theology. And this methodology in theology largely built Catholic theology and universities from the 700s until Luther's day in the 16th century. Scholasticism is the established Starbucks brand and how the Catholic Church has been grounded and led for around eight centuries. In the 97 Thesis, Martin Luther puts forward 97 statements that if proved true would be a scathing indictment of Aristotelian philosophy, the scholastic teaching method, and scholastic Catholic theology. In fact, the 97 Thesis is also known as a disputation against scholastic theology which may just seem like a boring name for an old document, but again, to put this in Starbucks terms, it would be called a disputation against how Starbucks makes and serves all coffee. So, if you are keeping score, an indictment of scholastic theology is basically an indictment of the Catholic Church itself. And in the 97 Thesis, first, Luther rips the idea that humanity has free will or any capacity to choose, meditate, or discover good on their own. This is the domino that attempts to topple scholasticism because much of scholastic conclusions are based on human logic and free will. Just a few examples. Thesis 4, he states, man being a bad tree can only will and do evil. 5. It is false to state that man's inclination is free to choose. 7. Without the grace of God, the will produces an act that is perverse and evil. And in 6, Luther names names, writing, It is false to state that the will can by nature conform to the correct precept. This is said in opposition to Scotus and Gabriel. End quotes. Basically, Luther states, Without God's graceful intervention, humanity is evil, can only choose and produce evil, and does not have the intellectual ability to, to discern divine truths no matter what those two respected theologians taught. Humanity's intellect and free will are broken by our sinful nature, and our intellect and will cannot deduce truths because our intellect and will are evil to their core until God's grace intervenes. It stands in clear opposition to Aristotelian philosophy and scholasticism that holds to the good of human logic and free will. Luther stands in opposition to a primary premise of scholasticism that humanity can use free will and intellect to discern truth, but Luther goes even farther. Second, if it wasn't clear that his belief in the depravity of humanity stands in opposition of Aristotle, don't worry, he makes that clear. Luther states in Thesis 40, We are not made righteous by doing righteous deeds, but having been made righteous, we then do righteous deeds, which opens the door to crush Aristotle. Thesis 41, Virtually the entire ethics of Aristotle is the worst enemy of grace. This is in opposition to the scholastics. 42. It is an error to maintain that Aristotle's statement on happiness does not contradict Catholic doctrine. 43. It is an error to say that no man can become a theologian without Aristotle. 44. No one can become a theologian unless he becomes one without Aristotle. Basically, the scholastic premise on humanity is wrong, and now the philosophy which scholasticism is built upon is wrong. And Luther continues. Third, syllogistic study and teaching is wrong. Thesis 45. To state that a theologian who is not a logician is a monstrous heretic, this is a monstrous and heretical statement. 
47, no syllogistic form is valid when applied to divine terms. This is an opposition to the cardinal. I don't know which cardinal he is referring to, but Luther just stated, one of my bosses is wrong here. And the second half of the 97 Thesis is Luther arguing for the central need of God's grace. Now, in fairness, the scholastics did not neglect grace. They had a theology of grace, but not like Luther, whose central idea is humanity's pure need for grace. We cannot think right without grace. We cannot do good without grace. We cannot merit blessings. They are gifts of grace. We cannot deduce one's divine truth without God's grace revealing it to us. You can clearly see here the roots of Luther's famous work, The Bondage of the Will. But if I have not been clear enough, the 97 Thesis argues the bedrock foundation of the theology of the Catholic Church over the last 800 years or so is flawed. Aristotelian philosophy that has been used to develop the Church's theology, flawed. So it also led to flawed theological conclusions. Syllogisms, the use of logic to discern divine truth, that, according to the 97 Thesis, is flawed and led to flawed conclusions. The way the Catholic Church has been studying and teaching theology for centuries is flawed, leading to flawed beliefs. Scholasticism's brightest thinkers, such as Beale, Scotus, William, and even the great Aquinas, are flawed, leading to flawed beliefs. It just can't be overstated. The 97 Thesis is a scathing indictment of how the Catholic Church has studied and taught theology for centuries. The use of Aristotle? Wrong. Scholasticism's use of syllogism and logic? Wrong. The conclusions that humanity can deduce truth and possibly do good? Wrong. Free will? Wrong, wrong, wrong. The whole scholastic system is wrong. I may have just understated that 287% more shocking number. And as always, a bibliography is in the description below. Be blessed.